You might be feeling overwhelmed with all the AWS compute options to choose from. AWS keeps on coming out with more and more compute services, and it can be difficult to figure out which option is best for your use case. In this video, we're going to discuss the seven most popular compute services and how they compare against setup, reliability, cost, maintenance, and abstraction. At the end, we'll take a look at all these services at once to discuss when it makes sense to use one over the other. So let's get into it. First, we're going to start with EC2. EC2 stands for Elastic Compute Cloud. It's one of the oldest services launched by AWS. The service offers you the ability to rent virtual servers with a broad selection of power configurations. Some are tiny micro instances that cost a few pennies, while others are super powerful and can cost hundreds. In terms of abstraction, EC2 scores poorly. This is because EC2 is a low-level building block that you can use however you please. This can be a good or a bad thing depending on your use case. It's great if you require fine-grained control over the hardware. If not, the additional setup and configuration you'll need to do may feel overwhelming. For setup, EC2 scores poorly here as well. Setup requires deciding which instance type is appropriate for your workload, and learning a bunch of other concepts beyond just EC2. Sure, you can get away with launching a basic instance using an express configuration, but any non-trivial use case requires additional learnings. For reliability, EC2 scores very good. Instances are auto-replaced if there ever is a hardware problem, and instances can also be predictably commissioned in advance or provisioned on demand. Overall, EC2 is an extremely reliable service that has consistent uptime. In terms of cost, EC2 scores very good. This is thanks to having flexibility on the instance types you provision that can help you select just the right amount of resources for your workload. You can also take advantage of purchasing reserved instances, which require one to three year upfront commitments, but can provide you some significant cost savings in the long run. Finally for EC2 is maintenance, where it scores poorly. Renting your own virtual server means you have to worry about things like operating system patching, driver updates, or other infrastructure patches. Some of these items can be automated, but you as the user and owner are responsible for ensuring your EC2 machines are up to date. In summary, EC2 is a low-level service that acts as the backbone for AWS. But what if we want a little bit more abstraction of our infrastructure using an orchestration framework? For that, we can use ECS. ECS stands for Elastic Container Service. It's a highly scalable container management system that launches and maintains your containerized applications. You can use it to run ad hoc compute tasks or leverage the service mode to run things like a web app over a fleet of containers. There are two main configuration modes for ECS. One involves leveraging EC2 machines to host your containers. The other mode is a serverless configuration known as Fargate, but we'll discuss more about that later. In terms of abstraction, the default launch mode for ECS involves running your containers as tasks on EC2 instances. Task health is monitored and maintained using an ECS side agent installed on those EC2 machines. This configuration is a bit better than using EC2 on its own since we get all the benefits of using containers. However, we still need to worry about the underlying EC2 instance and things like networking between our instances and the containers themselves. Because of this, I give ECS a satisfactory score for abstraction. Setup can be a bit daunting for ECS. You need to configure your container and VPC network to work together properly. And in addition, you need to define resource requirements for each of your container instances. If you're using the more advanced features like load balancing or blue-green deployments, there can be a significant learning curve. Overall, I give it a satisfactory. ECS score is very good for reliability. This is because you can rely on the ECS container agent to maintain the health of your cluster, including the placement of your tasks onto the EC2 machines. The machines will replace themselves if there's ever a case of failure. For cost, you only pay for the underlying EC2 instances and nothing extra. The only slightly minor cost is container image storage, which is typically very low. Overall, really good points here. For maintenance, we have similar concerns to those we raised with EC2, mainly around infrastructure maintenance, including things like software vulnerabilities or security patches. Our scoring is consistent with what we gave EC2. The past two sections have been about leveraging EC2 machines to host your software. But what if we want to rely on AWS to manage the infrastructure for us? This is where something like AWS Fargate will come in. Fargate is the name of an alternative launch option for ECS. It involves using a completely serverless configuration where AWS worries about managing the underlying EC2 instances on your behalf. This makes it so that you can focus more on your application development and less on infrastructure setup and management. 
For abstraction, Fargate is a step above EC2 and vanilla ECS. The serverless run mode means we don't need to think about machines anymore, and instead just focus on our containers and the tasks that they run in. We give Fargate a good for abstraction. Setup is better here as well. Not worrying about infrastructure means there's generally one big chunk of the setup process that we can easily avoid. In terms of reliability, Fargate worries about the tasks that you run and the underlying infrastructure that they run on. You can easily add more tasks if your workload requires it, but generally you don't worry about very much beyond just your application when using Fargate. Cost is based on the amount of resources that you provision for your tasks. The more virtual CPUs and memory you provision, the more you pay. Another cost factor is storage if you require more than 20 gigabytes. You can save on cost as well by over 70% if your workloads take advantage of spot pricing. This offers a better price point, but AWS may interrupt your workloads at any time. Obviously, this is only appropriate in certain circumstances. Similar to setup, there's almost no maintenance here for Fargate configurations beyond software deployments. Top points for maintenance. So far, we've been steadily increasing in terms of abstraction. The pinnacle of infrastructure abstraction is AWS Lambda, our next compute option for discussion. Lambda is a completely serverless compute option that goes one step further than Fargate. In Lambda, you don't worry about infrastructure at all and just worry about your code. Lambda handles all the scaling behind the scenes. Another great asset for Lambda is that it easily integrates with other AWS services, such as API Gateway, SQS, SNS, Step Functions, S3, DynamoDB, and many, many more. It's a very powerful and popular service that can act as a glue to orchestrate the interaction between other services. You can also use it to build microservices or backends for web apps if you wish. As you might imagine, Lambda gets top points for abstraction. It's completely serverless where all the infrastructure is managed by AWS, top points in this category. For setup, minimal effort is required. You simply upload your code and Lambda takes care of the rest. Additionally, you'll configure the memory setting for your function. When raising your memory setting, you'll also get access to more virtual CPUs that will speed up your Lambda invocation. This can help if you have heavy workloads that require access to more resources. For reliability, Lambda is almost top scoring, but suffers from a phenomenon called cold start. Cold start occurs because Lambda needs to launch containers in response to invocations of your function. This only happens in the initial invocations and not subsequent ones. The result is potentially higher latency for initial requests. This phenomenon makes API hosting with Lambdas not always the wisest choice, especially for API sensitive applications with consistent latency requirements. Because of this limitation, Lambda only scores good. In terms of cost, Lambda allows you to be very efficient. Your build based on the number of times you invoke your function, the duration of each invocation, and the amount of memory that you configure for that invocation. However, Lambda isn't viable for long running jobs more than 15 minutes. For that, you'll want to use something like AWS Fargate or AppRunner. For maintainability, there's top points here. There's nothing really to maintain for AWS Lambda. The only setting you'll want to keep an eye on is concurrency to make sure you're not getting occasionally throttled. Let's switch gears now to talk about a service that's a little bit more easy to work with and that allows you to get set up really quickly with common applications. I'm talking about Amazon LightSail. LightSail is a service that operates at a medium level of abstraction. It lets you follow a guided experience to launch web applications, websites, WordPress blogs, and other common application configurations in just a few clicks. You can also add multiple instances with load balancing if you need to achieve scale. Overall though, LightSail is an attempt to make managing your compute a lot more simple. If you're not happy with the abstraction level of LightSail and looking for more control, you can easily upgrade your configuration to EC2 with just a few clicks. Setup for LightSail is pretty minimal and straightforward. You simply select from the available configurations, such as LAMP, Mean, WordPress, or others, and LightSail handles the rest. You may, however, need to be familiar with load balancing concepts, DNS setups, and CDNs if your application requires it. All of these extras, though, are accessible directly in the LightSail section of the AWS console. In terms of reliability, I have a slight gripe with LightSail because it uses a concept called burst capacity. This means that if your instance's CPU utilization goes beyond a certain threshold for a sustained period of time, it will consume all of its burst capacity and be forced to operate at a throttled CPU percentage. 
You can mitigate this by using a more powerful instance, but it can cause some inconsistent performance during periods of sustained load. Lightsail scores lower for cost as well. Lightsail is essentially just a wrapper on top of other AWS services. You pay an additional price for the cost of convenience. The pricing model though allows you to pick from a preset configuration. You can pay as low as $3.50 a month for a small machine or up to $160 a month for a monster. Lightsail also scores pretty well for maintenance. The only issue I have with it is the concern with burst capacity. You do need to monitor your metrics to ensure your instance isn't exceeding its burst capacity too often. Doing so can seriously impact performance. I speak from experience. Overall, Lightsail offers a simplified experience for launching pre-configured applications. With it, you don't have visibility into the underlying infrastructure. Our next option is similar in that it lets you launch and deploy common apps, except with this option, you'll maintain control over all the underlying infrastructure components. We're talking about Elastic Beanstalk. Elastic Beanstalk is an orchestration service that promotes ease of use for deploying and scaling web applications and backend services. You simply upload your code or Docker image and Elastic Beanstalk handles provisioning, deployments, monitoring, and scaling. For abstraction, Beanstalk score is satisfactory, but this isn't necessarily a bad thing. After all, if you're using Elastic Beanstalk, it's probably because you want control over the underlying infrastructure. So take from this what you will. Setup is a breeze with Beanstalk. You can link your source code through a Git repository, through your IDE, or upload it directly in the console. Beanstalk will automatically set up the EC2 instances, launch your application, monitor its health, and scale when it's needed. It's really a breeze, top marks in this category. Since Beanstalk operates on top of EC2, its reliability similarly scores top marks. Additionally, automatic scaling means your application is capable of handling very large workloads. There's really not a lot to worry about in the reliability category for Beanstalk. In terms of cost, there are no additional charges for using Elastic Beanstalk. You simply pay for the resources that the server launches and manages for you. There's no cost premium here like we saw with Lightsail. In terms of maintenance, Elastic Beanstalk regularly schedules platform updates to provide fixes, software upgrades, and new features. A large majority of the work is handled by Elastic Beanstalk automatically, but ultimately you still need to keep an eye on the underlying hardware. Overall, Elastic Beanstalk lets you create and deploy scalable applications while still having control over the underlying infrastructure. But what if we want the same functionality without having to worry about infrastructure at all? Well, that's the perfect use case for AppRunner. AppRunner is a relatively new AWS service that is meant to let developers quickly deploy containerized web apps and APIs without having to worry about infrastructure. It does everything Elastic Beanstalk does, but abstracts away the infrastructure for you. The service is fully managed, but only lets you deploy containerized applications. For abstraction, AppRunner scores top marks. Infrastructure, including compute, load balancing, container orchestration, security, and networking are all handled for you. There's no visibility into the underlying infrastructure though. It's all managed on your behalf by AWS. Setup is quite minimal and takes only a few moments. It requires you to select the amount of memory, virtual CPUs, and concurrency you require for your application. Beyond that, AppRunner worries about the rest. Reliability scores top marks as well. Despite being serverless like AWS Lambda, AppRunner does not suffer from the cold start phenomenon. This is because AppRunner maintains provisioned containers that are capable of responding instantly to incoming requests. This makes AppRunner a great choice for APIs or web apps requiring consistent performance. Cost scores slightly lower for AppRunner due to the provisioned containers it needs to manage. You pay a consistent overhead for this feature even when the containers aren't in use. Other than that, you pay for the number of instances you require based on their power configurations. For maintenance, AppRunner handles everything for you, no infrastructure patches or OS updates or anything like that. You may want to keep an eye on the concurrency setting though, or just enable auto scaling to ensure your application keeps up with demand. Top marks in this category. So far, we've talked about seven different AWS services in isolation and what they offer in terms of abstraction, setup, reliability, cost, and maintenance. But the obvious question is, when should you use what? Hopefully by now, you've understood that there are pros and cons for each option. However, there is some general guidance I can give you from a use case perspective when trying to decide between one or the other. So let's get into it. 
From left to right, let's start with EC2. You'll generally want to use EC2 when your use case requires you to have direct control over your virtual machine. This can be for things like setting up a distributed system or some other use case. In my opinion, there really isn't any other reason to use EC2 due to all the complexity it introduces. Tread carefully if you use this option. For ECS, you'll want to use it if you already have EC2 instances kicking around and you're looking to containerize them using a managed service. There's not really much else to say beyond that. I'd generally avoid vanilla ECS due to incrementally added complexity on top of using EC2. Fargate is an excellent option for all kinds of different workloads ranging from event processing to API hosting. The serverless nature of it makes it easy to use, cost effective, and supports long running jobs. Similar to AppRunner and unlike Lambda, it does not suffer from cold start, which makes it very viable for API hosting with strict latency requirements. Lambda is great for event processing. It can integrate really well with other AWS services to perform custom logic in response to events. It's a really powerful service that keeps on getting more and more popular. The lack of infrastructure management and focus on just code through functions makes it a particularly attractive option. Be careful though of the 15 minute maximum invocation time and the cold start phenomenon which can affect initial API latency. Lightsail is great if you quickly want to set up pre-configured applications in a guided way. The cost structure makes it more straightforward since everything is bundled into one predictable cost. The concern though is with the nature of burstable instances and how that can affect your application's performance. Elastic Beanstalk offers application orchestration, but still provides visibility and ownership into the underlying hardware. It's a full out-of-the-box solution that includes a whole bunch of added functionality if you need it. Great if you want to build an app quickly, but still be confident it can scale effectively in the future. Finally, AppRunner is great if you need a container orchestration service that is completely serverless. You get no insight into the hardware, which can be a good thing for many. The provision model makes it capable of avoiding cold start and ensuring fast response times for your application. If you want to learn more about any of these services, check out the playlist on the left for overview videos, or you can check out the description below for links to the specific ones.